Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and we are talking about some game news. So it is the crunchiest time of year right now. The industry is ramping into the November launch cycle, littered with the hopes and dreams of small startups like EA Games and Bethesda. And they're all clawing their way to the top of a digital cesspool of pre-Christmas sales. That time, of course, brings with it some major video game news, and that's exactly what we're covering here today. This week's major game news includes a pair of high-profile space flight exploration titles. I bet you can guess what one of them is. The impending onslaught of utterly unimpressive scoreboard screenshots that we will soon have to endure from Overwatch, and the return of classic RPGs alongside some Fallout 4 mod news. So let's get started with No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky just posted its I've Seen Things trailer, that is the name of it, which shows ships warping in to battle planetary exploration of procedurally generated and handcrafted terrain and more. No Man's Sky builds itself as a space sim with a mix of space combat and first person exploration. So it's got a bit of everything, but it is certainly more heavily focused on the exploration aspect and planet-side elements of the game as it stands currently. The game does hope to achieve some level of spaceflight accuracy, but not nearly the same level as some other active titles, like Elite Dangerous or certainly Star Citizen, as it hopes to do. And its biggest differentiating factor comes from the planet-side adventures and fantastical environments, as seen here. You can land planet-side with your ship, get out, walk around, and all that sort of stuff. The trailer is certainly newsworthy in its own right, but more newsworthy is the game's June 2016 release time frame, and this is the first official word we've heard on a release date yet. That was announced at Sony's recent PlayStation conference. Star Citizen, for other topical news points, will be adding a new flight model in the Alpha 2.0 build. So developer Cloud Imperium Games posted a blog post on its website that showed some of the Star Citizen Alpha 2.0 plans, which was an initially announced with the Hollywood cast. So if you watched CitizenCon and our coverage of that, you will be familiar with some of Alpha 2.0 already. But the big news for today is the new flight model, which is pretty important for fans who may have grown tired of the current placeholder system. It is well known that the current system is a placeholder, but it's just not been a priority to push out an updated system I guess until this point, under uh, a significant amount of demand from the backers. There will be a few primary modes of flight in Star Citizen, simplified down to four IFCS profiles, which are classified as precision for takeoff and landing, to help you avoid smashing into station or planetary objects from lack of fine control, especially with digital input devices with like keyboards, where you can't control the input more finely as you can with an analog joystick. There's also space combat maneuvering mode or SCM which uses formulas to calculate the strongest turning axis, calculate the maximum velocity and the drift controls. There's an afterburner mode which is an extension to SCM and that assists in delivering cleaner more fluid gameplay mechanics by way of adding what is effectively a nitrous oxide injection as you get with racing games and those familiar with racing games will immediately see the usefulness here which is that you can use the afterburner to assist in drifting and acceleration and that exists to some extent already but it's being amped up and improved upon in the new update and you can read the dev blog post for more information on that cruise mode is the final IFCS profile that's at the top level here, and that allows for traveling at great distances with significantly faster speeds than what SCM allows. SCM is built and tuned for spaceflight combat, so that mode is under the assumption that you are in some sort of dogfight or greater combat endeavor which requires precision controls, but not the same level of precision required for takeoff and landing. So it's a mix of speed and maneuverability. The full official blog post goes into the math behind all of the different modes of transit. For those who want deeper details on formulas involved in speed calculations and all of that sort of stuff, you can check the link in the description below for the article, which contains more of that information if it is of interest. Overwatch 
I first played Overwatch at some PAX event. I think it was PAX Prime 2014 or something like that. And the game felt fine. I wrote a, an article about it, pretty short preview piece. And it felt kind of like Team Fortress or now, now that it's out and we know it even exists, Dirty Bomb would be another good comparison. But Overwatch has new characters, some obvious MOBA influence and the typical Blizzard flair with its character design and development. Overwatch never really struck me as revolutionary, but it was certainly fun enough and could make a name for itself if Blizzard adequately supports the title going forward. And as a standalone title, it's supposed to be a pretty fluid, quick, fast-paced shooter. Sort of twitchy, but not too much. So it's not full Unreal, but it's not full Team Fortress 2 either. And then it's got some interesting mechanical elements with its many, many characters, which there can only be one of each per team. So that certainly adds to the mechanics as well. And this week we learned that Overwatch has officially entered its first major closed beta phase with registrations still being sent through Battle.net. So if you haven't gotten an invite yet, there's still hope. You might still get one. The Blizzard team is selecting beta testers through Battle.net accounts. So be sure to check your account or associated email to see if you've been accepted. And we'll be testing the game in short order and we'll certainly be posting gameplay videos showcasing the game's actual mechanics and playthrough potential. As a complete 180, we now look to good old games for its revival of a series of old school RPGs. Those of you who are fond of 90s CRPGs inspired by Dragonlance and Dungeons and Dragons will be happy to hear that Dark Sun, which is a D&D official title, Ravenloft, and Kryn, which is one of the locales in Dragonlance, are all slated for arrival on good old games. The titles have been digitally updated for compatibility with modern hardware and operating systems, and you'll get the same crisp, pixel-perfect graphics of their 90s release dates, and by pixel perfect, I mean you can probably count the pixels in the games. Fallout 4 is the last news item for this episode. Fallout 4 is fast approaching, as you all likely know, it's slated for a November 10th launch, and we'll soon have our review samples in hand, but until that point, there's a final bit of news before the launch. Bethesda's Pete Hines, one of the official employees who's pretty active on Twitter, replied to a tweet asking about mod availability and if or when mods will be made available through the Fallout 4 channels. So Pete Hines stated that, quoting him, if it's okay with you, we're gonna focus on the game release first and talk about mods when we've figured some stuff out. So it seems that as of now, there may not be officially supported mod development tools immediately at launch, but it's almost guaranteed that Bethesda will eventually release a toolkit. It would just, it would be totally uncharacteristic of them not to. So I'm not really worried about that not happening, but we'll see if the paid mods fiasco has had any impact on the company's decisions for Fallout 4 and its modding options. That's all for this week's news. Let me know what you think of this type of shorter, easier video in terms of easier to digest and easier to make. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We're still doing the heavy hitting stuff, still doing just as much of it, but I wanted to fill the gaps with content that can keep everyone in the loop on the games and the hardware industries and keep the information flowing. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't get its own video or article just because of the sheer volume of information. So that's what these shorter series are for. Check out the Patreon link in the post roll video to help us out and I'll see you next time.